Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. Hey friends, please take a minute and just imagine living the unique and distinct life you were put on this planet to live, doing work you love, with people you love, in places you love, and all the while creating something of real value to others. That's what I call a life of significance. And I can tell you it makes a very happy life. And so can Vince Warnock. He's my guest star today. And he's come all the way from Wellington, New Zealand to share <laughs> his unique and distinct accent. I mean, <laughs> his really, he's really here to share his unique and distinct journey to his life of significance. Hey, Vince, welcome to the show. Matt, thank you so much for having me here, man. This is an absolute honor. Awesome. Just take a minute or two and tell us what you're doing these days to make your mark of significance on the world. Oh my goodness. So many things. Um, <laughs> one of the probably more interesting things. So I do, uh, I'm a marketing coach by trade. So I help a lot of entrepreneurs to become thought leaders. I help a lot of entrepreneurs to kind of position themselves in market. And that in itself is incredibly fulfilling because I only pick people, I only work with people that are trying to do something, an element of social good, something that's trying to bring something positive to this world. So that in itself is incredibly fulfilling. Uh, I also run a publishing company. So I help a lot of those entrepreneurs to become authors. And in doing that, uh, honestly, there is nothing more satisfying than seeing the look of someone holding that book in their hand and going, I did it, I did it, I'm an author. Um, so that in itself is really fulfilling. But one of the more exciting things I think I'm working on at the moment, Matt, is um, is actually in the NFT space. And I know a lot of people roll their eyes at NFTs when they hear that. Um, but this is very different. This is not in the investment space. It's not in the, it's very different from what you'd see with things like Board Ape Yacht Club. It really is an NFT series designed to reprogram people's brains. It's essentially built on neuroscience, but it's also designed from a children's book that I wrote 15 years ago mm. that challenges us to aspire to be better and challenges us as human beings to live uh, what is a more fulfilled and more satisfying life and to to basically basically to give us something to look up to that's not just you know sports people and, not, and entertainers and people that aren't really role models for us. Instead, finding true role, model, role models within that. So, so that's what I'm working on at the moment. I'm super excited about just being able to positively impact the way we perceive each other, positively Im impact the way that we think about this world, I think is incredibly fulfilling. That's awesome. Thank you. So now, Vince, let's have a little fun with mathematics. <laughs> Let our friends from New Zealand, North Carolina, get to know you through our equation of the happy okay. formula. It's okay. a simple equation, simple, but it's very powerful. Capacity plus purpose equals happy. So let's start with capacity. What are your practices for building your personal capacity, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional? In other words, Vince, what is it you do on a regular basis? Yeah. To all the capacity you need to take really good care of yourself and your loved ones and yep. still have plenty left over to be a giver to others. Oh my goodness. Um, first of all, the first thing I've done is recognize that I'm not very good at that. Uh, and what I mean by that is I'm a very passionate person and I, I really do want to leave my mark on this world. I really do want to make an impact. There's so many people I want to be able to help and influence and, and be able to impact. As a result, uh, combine that with ADHD, you end up with a scenario where I can overwork all the time. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I've actually done is being able to step back from that. And to do that, A, I, I reprogram my entire house here. So everything talks to me. Like all our automation basically reminds me, have you taken a break? Or, you know, what are you doing still in front of the computer bits? Or blah, blah, blah. But also it's surrounding myself with people that can hold me to account and giving them permission to hold me to account. Yeah. Um, one of the main people, obviously, is my wife. We've been married uh, 27 years now. Um, and one of the common kind of questions that she gives me is she'll just give me this look. And I know when she gives me the look, I need to pay attention. And she'll go, are you looking after yourself? Uh, and I, at that moment, I've learned not to react because I'm a very extroverted person. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Actually to stop, to pause, to look inward and go, am I actually looking after myself? Am I burning myself out? Am I working too hard? Am I taking too much on? And I found that's a really good check and balance in there. Um, but then also within my teams, uh, with any project I'm working on, even within the NFT project, is making sure that we've got someone in there that can hold the rest of us to account to make sure that we're all 
taking time for our families, that we're all taking time for ourselves, that we're taking time for our passions and our side projects to make sure that we're not fully committing to something that is going to just burn us out. So so really it's being deliberate, I guess, is the key there, being deliberate and intentional. Yeah, that's good. And and when you really are, when, when you found your purpose and you just love yeah. what you're doing, it's so easy just to stay in it oh all the goodness. time. And oh, add, add to that, Matt, uh, I also have a weird genetic mutation. I've got this strange disorder where well, it's not really a disorder. It's just a different way of being where I only sleep four hours a night. Oh, God. So for me, um, that's I wake up fully refreshed, fully revitalized after four hours which means that I can I can burn the candle at both ends and in the middle if I'm not careful, you know, <laughs> like so actually being very deliberate with my time, very intentional is really, really important to make sure I'm I'm here for the long haul. Good, good. So let's explore one of my favorite capacity building concepts called a Kaizen state of mind. It's this beautiful Japanese idea that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great big results. I love events because it's based on mindset, not yep. circumstance. A Kaizen state of mind is knowing there's always something I can do better tomorrow than today. It's yeah. optimistic and it creates this gentle, powerful, continuous uplifting of my life day after day after day. So, I am a huge fan of Kaizen. I actually wrote yeah, about it. How do, you use, yeah. how do you use it to, to increase your capacity on a daily basis? I think the first thing is you've got to get incredibly comfortable with knowing that you don't know everything, first of all. Um, and incredibly comfortable with um, being able to make mistakes because Kaizen is really about making incremental changes. And to make those changes, you have to look at where you're not optimized or you're not performing. And to do that, that means you need to be very realistic with yourself. It, it's kind of, it, we have these weird cognitive bias as entrepreneurs. We look at things through this rose colored lens of going, okay, well, everything's fine. Even when it's not fine, everything's fine. But actually being comfortable going, you know what? That didn't go the way I expected what can I now do to make that slightly more or to tweak it even more? And actually seeing um, things that don't go your way as opportunities to be able to do this is really exciting. So it's one of the things I've been trying to teach one of my teams is to say, look, uh, we did a big launch. We did a big launch of a project. Uh, it did not go the way we anticipated at all. We launched just before a market crash, which is never a good idea, by the way. <laughs> so since we went out, they were like, yay, everyone, we've got this thing that none of you are going to buy because you're all freaking out right now. Okay, maybe we'll pause on that. So so what we had to do with that is we had to look at that and say, okay, well, what can we now do? What's, what one little incremental change can we make yeah. to be able to make this more palatable for people? What little incremental change can we make now to make this that it's more engaged with people that they can, when the market resurrects itself, they'll be more inclined to buy into it. So it's about recognizing those mistakes, recognizing the things that don't go your way, and then acting on those with those changes. And talk about Kaizen. Kaizen can be adding more and doing better, but yep. can also be getting rid of anything and everything that doesn't serve you or no longer serves you. Talk yep. about the power of that, because that's what that's what took me longer to learn. And I think I think mm -hmm. less is more is very powerful. Oh man, this this plays into a, a concept I've got called the Code Red Protocol, which is something I came up with because I found a lot of the businesses that I worked with, they would come to me and they go, this little thing over here is not working. Or they'll say, I'm not generating enough leads with this program that I'm looking at, uh, yeah, that I've launched. And I would look at it and go, the problem isn't with the program you're launching. It's so much bigger than this. It's the, your messaging isn't resonating with your target market. Your target market might be wrong. All of these different things. So what we did is, we set up this code red protocol where we strip back everything mm -hmm. and we say, let's strip it back to the bare assumptions that you have about your target market, the assumptions that you've made around what in your messaging resonates with them, uh, the assumptions that your product is even a good fit for them. Let's peer it all back to the bare bones basic of this and let's test every element of it. Let's use Kaizen to strip back and then to add on to. And from that, we, we, we test each of those assumptions and, a good example of that was um, one of my clients who was doing cooking classes and she uh, wanted to do adult-based cooking classes. So she went out there and she was doing all these ones with children, which was working really, really well. She launched these adult ones and she didn't get as many people sign up as she thought. So she was like, okay, I need to tweak my messaging. I need to do this and this. And I said, stop, let's peer it right back. Let's actually have a look at who signed up for yours. And we noticed that every single person that signed up was an entrepreneur. Hmm. We're like, oh, okay, well, 
That means your assumption that any adult would want this is not necessarily accurate. So far, the only adults that have signed up for this are entrepreneurs. So how can we test? So in the end, basically by stripping back and adding to it, she ended up launching a bunch of these networking events where you would come in, you would have three experts in their field teach about a different aspect while all of you are on Zoom baking a souffle. And you're baking the souffle together as this shared experience. Even the speakers are baking the souffle as well. I know because I did one of them. Uh, I'm baking the souffle while trying to talk to everybody. It was nerve wracking. But at the end, while everyone's eating the souffle and having the shared meal together, you're answering questions from all these people. And it's a very intimate way for entrepreneurs to connect. That was the thing that resonated with her audience. So she would never have got there if she didn't strip it back first and then add to it. Good stuff. Well, let's move on to purpose. That's the second element of the formula. And Vince, I've observed that major life transformations and discovery of purpose often comes from devastation, addiction or abuse, disease, death, disaster, some awful thing strips a life to its core and creates this great big change. However, in my book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I share a transformational process that I've used to discover my purpose through inspiration. So how about you, Vince? Was there a specific moment or event or crisis or inspiration that revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? Um, kind of a combination of both, actually, Matt. Um, so um, I, this is public knowledge uh, for people, but I, I grew up in a horrible environment. Um, as a child, I grew up in poverty, grew up in a very impoverished family, but also a very abusive family. My father was a drug addict. My mother was an alcoholic. Um, and being in that environment you don't really have hope, essentially. You don't really have role models of people that you could look up to, that you could aspire to be like. You essentially, if, if not, you know, if someone doesn't intervene, you're essentially going to be a statistic. Wow. So for the first probably 11 years of my life, that was my life. Mm -hmm. And for me, home was a very horrible place. School was a very happy place. But at age 11, I went to a different school. And I had a teacher who genuinely transformed my life. And I was a really, I was a very intelligent kid, but also, you know, in a very uh, poor school. Um, and I was very cheeky as a result of all of that. So we were doing these school projects one day and, um, and I, I think I was doing it on sharks. I mean, when you're 11 year old boy, that's good. You did sharks or spiders or something cool, dragons or whatever, you know, I did sharks. And I remember the teacher saying, look, um, get ready. You know, next week, we're going to have to do oral presentations. And I'm like, Pfft. And he goes, what was that? And I said, oh, when are we, why do we need to do oral presentations? Yeah. And he goes, oh, to prepare you for the real world, Vince. And I said, when are any of us going to get the opportunity to do public speaking or do oral presentation when we're older? And he goes, well, how about now? And he called me up in front of the class. He was calling my bluff, called me up in front of the class. And he said, okay, class, Vince is going to speak for five minutes on a topic. What topic are we going to give him? And, you know, being the creative geniuses that 11-year-olds are, they came up with an egg. So I had to speak for five minutes about an egg. Um, I don't recall anything I spoke about, Matt, but I just remember he said, right, you got 20 seconds. And then he goes, right, your time starts now. The only thing in my head, I was panicking. The only thing in my head was that stupid saying, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. So I spoke that out. The moment I did that, my brain went to this other space. And next thing you know, I was like pulling these strings and people were laughing and I was going off on different tangents and they were gasping and they were like, and all this and I was like this is amazing I was having so much fun and we got to the end he goes you got 20 seconds left and we're kind of thinking how do I finish it off and then end up with so obviously the chicken came first and everyone cracked up laughing they're all you know and it was this amazing moment and I remember turning around to him and he was smiling at me and he goes that was awesome I said oh thanks you know I was buzzing and he goes no no listen to me and he stopped me in my moment and he said that was amazing you have a gift he said do you realize you could do something really significant with your life and at that one moment, something happened inside of me. I remember feeling this weird, bubbly feeling. I've never felt it before. I wasn't sure what it was. And I was like, oh, it's hope. Oh, it's yeah. potential. And that one moment, this 11-year-old boy suddenly realized, I don't have to be defined by my past. I can, I can actually rewrite my future, that I actually have hope and I have potential. But it also inspired me, Matt, to want other people to feel that as well. And that's what made me realize that it, because it didn't matter where I came from, it doesn't matter where anybody else come from, it comes from either. Everybody has the potential to do something really significant with their life. So that was a really transformative moment for me. That's big. That's great. You got goosebumps all over me, Vince. <laughs> let's, take a, let's take a little break here to let our sponsor spread a little love to our listeners. Mr. 
author Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love Dry Farm Wines. They've transformed my drinking experience with sugar-free, lower alcohol, lab-tested natural wine. It's only grown on small family farms with respect for nature and using regenerative agriculture. You can literally taste the difference. It's naturally delicious. And it's super important because the quality of the food we eat and the wine we drink makes up the quality of our life. Go to happyliving.com, select Partners in Happy, and get your first bottle of natural wine for one penny. Share the gift of natural wine and pour some love this holiday season. We're back, and this is the Something Significant Show, and I'm your happy host, Matt Gersper. And my special guest star today is Vince Warnock, an award-winning marketer, an author, a marketing strategist, and sought-after public speaker. And he's also a Fearless 50 recipient, recognized as one of the top 50 marketers in the world who are driving bold, fearless marketing and digital transformation. Oh, Vince, I love bold and fearless transformation. <laughs> And I also love this article called The Science Behind the Power of Giving. I found it on lifescience.com, and it says the act of giving itself can be a gateway to discovering your reason for being on this planet. It tells us how science supports the notion that giving one's time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway for discovering purpose and transcending difficulties and finding fulfillment and meaning in life. So I updated the formula. Yep. Capacity plus purpose plus giving equals really happy. So what do you think, <laughs> what do you think Vince? I life, love that. <laughs> you, found, you found that giving your time and your talents and your treasure has been a pathway for discovering your purpose and for transcending difficulties that you've faced yep. and for bringing real meaning into your life. Oh, absolutely. I, I'll give you a, a bit of uh, my background. So um, I was previous to doing what I'm doing now. I was the chief marketing officer at Signal Insurance, a Fortune 100 company. And prior to that, I kind of created and sold businesses. But I spent five years at Signal, and on paper, it's the dream job, Matt. I like, honestly, um, the pay was ludicrous. The, the bonuses were embarrassing, but you know, very welcome, obviously. Um, but I got to work on some incredible projects. Uh, I got the results there. We double the revenue of a Fortune 100 company in the five years I was there. A lot to do with the work that I was doing. Um, but also I got recognition internally and externally. And as you said, you know, Adobe recognized me as one of the top 50 marketers in the world. Uh, published my first book when I'm there. Like all of these things. I got to speak on stages all over the world. Got to travel and stay in, you know, five-star hotels, flying business class. It was amazing. Mm. Except I was incredibly unhappy. And I remember sitting in my office, I had the the largest, I actually, I'm not allowed to say the largest office because technically the CEO's was bigger. It wasn't really, but we weren't allowed to say it was. <laughs> so, but I had the second largest office in the building. And I remember looking out over our harbor here and seeing all the cruise ships coming in going, I'm going on you next. And then you, this is all pre-COVID obviously. Um, and I remember thinking, I'm feeling really guilty and really ashamed of the fact that I didn't want this job because for a marketer, that's pretty much the pinnacle of your career. When you're a chief marketing officer at some, a company that large and you've got that many bonuses and benefits and things, that is the peak. And I had the peak and I was unhappy. So I had to realize why that was. And it really was down to the fact that I wasn't aligned with my purpose, which is helping other people. And leaving there it was the easiest hard decision of my life. I left there. I, I remember having the conversation with the CEO in December 2019 um she thought i was going crazy actually genuinely asked if i wanted a psychologist um, and i was like no no i'm fine uh left in january 2020 or pre-covid um but i wanted to get to where i was feeling fulfilled and that was helping others and i'm doing that through the books that i'm writing i'm doing that through the consulting work that i'm doing the strategy work that i'm doing with others i'm doing that through seeing other people get the results and i can genuinely say i've never felt more fulfilled and, and as to do what i'm doing now um, I, kind, I kind of feel it feels really selfish because the more you give to other people, the more you actually receive. So it's kind of a you can't really be selfless, you know, <laughs> that's exactly what that article is about. And folks, yeah. you've got to read it. 
Uh, we'll put it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, but what Vince just said is right, and and our paths are quite similar. You know, helping corporations improve is fulfilling, but it's not like yeah. helping a person improve. Exactly. That's exactly. the big difference. And and so yeah. the science agrees with us. And yeah. I love that wonderful feeling that comes from the fourth element of significance, doing yeah. work that creates value for others. I know from my own experience, the magic of life comes not from getting more, but yeah, from yeah. giving more, right? 100%, but, 100%. But there's more to it than that. It's not just the giving that's magical, Vince. What I've been exploring yeah. and learning and living too is it's when you're giving from living in your purpose. Yes. Where you find the real magic. Yeah. So, so tell us, Vince, how does it feel to be happily living your life and giving to others through the purpose, the, the work you were putting this plant to do through your purpose yeah, yeah. and the people around you have taken notice. So Vince, I just want you to sit back for a moment, open your heart and just listen to the impact you're making on others by living and giving from the life you were meant to live. Hey Matt, I can say a lot about Vince. He's a fantastic friend. We interviewed each other for our podcasts and have been good friends ever since. Vince Warnock is probably the most generous marketer I know. He gives freely of information and content and makes marketing fun. He is, incredible, he is an incredible connector and community builder and he does it with natural, he does it so naturally and with ease. I love working with him and meeting fabulous people through him. He always has a wise, he always has wise advice for me when I need it. He's always looking to help others. Vince is the best supportive, encouraging. He genuinely has your back. If you're struggling, he's there for you. A great cheerleader, amazing, awesome, humble, kind, down to earth, quirky, gifted, a real go-getter. He's been super helpful in my book writing process. The personalized services he provides is unlike anything I've ever seen before. You mentioned this earlier, I cried when my book arrived. I never thought I could do this. And now here I am, a published author. Vince genuinely made me feel like I could do it and inspired me to get, keep going when it got tough. His story is definitely inspiring and people will be lucky to hear it. I'm so glad that you'll be interviewing him because he's a lot of fun. A lot of fun, she said. Vince <laughs> Vince Warnock has a mega super brain. He's, he's way more intelligent than people even know. And finally, Vince truly cares about my success. So Vince, tell us, how's all that make you feel? <laughs> I'm trying not to cry right now. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I'm speechless. I really am. Spe it's not often that I'm speechless, Matt, but... Um, I mean, I mean, that means a lot. And the, the reason it means a lot is because it's in alignment with with what I believe and what I'm trying to achieve. And it's in alignment with my purpose. Um, so when you hear feedback like that, that, you know, as we said, you know, aligns with your purpose, then there's no better feeling. It is incredible. And I remember, um, I'll just share this with you, Matt, but my, my wife's an addictions counselor, uh, or she's actually now a counselor working with young children as well. Um, but in her job, she helps people that are, at their lowest and people that desperately need help. But I remember going to pick her up from work one day and I'm sitting in the car and I'm listening to all this feedback from clients and feedback from people just saying, oh my goodness, I couldn't have done this without you. And I, one of my clients had just signed their largest um, their largest client themselves uh, ever. And they were so nervous, but so excited. And I was just listening to all this feedback and I'm sitting there, tears running down my face. Mm. My wife hops in the car and just goes, what's going on? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, all this feedback. And I'm like, I'm playing these audio files for her. And she just looked at me and goes, yeah, I saved two people's life today. I went, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> I can never compete with her work stories. But it's an incredible sense of fulfillment. And it really does drive home that um, leaving Cigna, doing the work that I'm doing was the exact right thing. So it's very important. Yep. And the reason I like to, I like to share that is because when you're living in your purpose, your life is fun and it's easier and you're just kind of happily going along. And yep. you don't realize the impact that you're making on others, mm. even those you're not serving necessarily, people who observe you, people who you're around, it makes a difference. So yeah. and that's that's the magic. It's this great big happy circle. 
Giving your time, talents, and treasures is a powerful pathway for discovering purpose. And giving from living in your purpose brings a profound joy to your life and to the lives of those around you. So giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. So Vince, to more properly reflect the exponential power of the happy formula, let me tweak it just a little bit more. Capacity times purpose times giving equals happy to the third power. And that's really, truly, deeply happy. Does that sound about right to you? That sounds spot on, man. 100%. I'm living proof of it. And I know you are as well. Yep. Good stuff. Okay, let's wrap things up with the lightning round. Okay. I love the power of words and the capacity for great quotes to change people's lives. So I'm going to read a few of my favorites and then have you tell us what, it, what they each mean to you. First thing that comes to your mind, Vince, because we call this a lightning round. Gotcha. Okay, you ready? <laughs> yep. From Albert Einstein. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Oh my goodness, hundred um, percent. Creativity is everything. It's one. It's it's an energy that you exist in essentially. When you live live in that creative energy, every obstacle is basically an opportunity. It's incredible. Good stuff from Michelangelo. The sculpture is already complete within the marble block before I start my work. It's already there. I just have to chisel away the unnecessary rock. Oh man, that, that describes coaching. I love that. <laughs> and, and I believe this about people as well. It's not just about marble, obviously, but every single person has greatness in them. They really do. Even people you don't agree with, even people you may not be aligned with, um, they have greatness in them, but it's about chiseling away the things that are holding them back, chiseling away the things that are unaligned till you get to the core of who they are. And that's when greatness shines. And in, in our modern culture, the, the rock we were born a certain way with all this magic inside us. And then there's just been rock after rock piled yeah, on us. And we think exactly. it's us. Exactly. And it's not us. It, it was yeah. never us. <laughs> precisely, precisely. Okay, this is from another big thinker, Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. One can have no smaller or greater mastery than mastery of oneself. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Leonardo da Vinci, honestly. Um, I've referenced him many times in my books. Um, yeah, 100%. And it's the, like... It's probably one of the most underrated things is, is realizing that the thing you can control most of all in life is your reaction to things and is your own progress. And the more you do that, the more you realize you inadvertently shape everything else around you. So 100%. Yeah. So you find your gift and then you master you. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. From Richard Branson, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity, but you're not <laughs> sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. And this has been the this has literally been the quote that I've used every startup I've created, every venture, because I've got no idea what the hell I'm doing. It's kind of it's exactly what you should be doing as an entrepreneur, by the way, is you should be out of your comfort zone. You should be creating something that does not exist, which means by the nature of that, you're making it up as you go along. So yes, always say yes to that opportunity. Work it out as you go along. If you've got all the answers, it's boring. That's right. From Helen Keller, security is mostly a superstition. It does not exist in nature, nor do the children of men as a whole experience it. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Yeah, I think a lot of people have found this out um, with the pandemic, because uh, a lot of people were safe and secure in their little jobs and their corporate environments and well, you know, had that calling to be an entrepreneur, but they really didn't want to pursue that because they were in safety. Mm -hmm. But then suddenly they realized that safety is just a perceived safety, mm -hmm. that when things become tough, those people you thought had your back do not have your back at all. And this is your opportunity to create your own future and your own destiny. Oh, such a good quote. Right on. Mm -hmm. This is the show anchor from Goth. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Yep, I'll sum that up with Nike's "Just Do It." <laughs> it's uh, honestly, if you if you feel like you're ready to do something, it's too late. Just get in and do it now. Get it what start it, and that boldness will happen as you're as you're on the venture. It's an, incredible. All right, and now, folks, it's your turn to be a giver too. If you can hear my voice and you are inspired by today's show with Vince Warnock, coming to you all the way from New Zealand, 
Please share some love with our super fantastic broadcast team by giving what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Vince, I love that you love helping people to build and grow the business they've always dreamed of. And I admire your belief in empowering others and your laser-like focus on enabling them to create their own wealth and success. Yes, yes I'm yes. a big believer in that too. And I'm super happy that you've shared your creative and fun and yet powerful spirit on our show today. Will you please take a minute or two and share any parting remarks you'd like to leave with our audience? Um, look, I guess the only parting remark I've got for you is the theme that came up through this regularly, which is every single person has the potential to do something great within them. And that includes you. Um, that means your life, your story, your background, all of that is significant and it's important. Um, so don't waste that. Don't sit on that. Be inspired. Uh, surround yourself with people that will lift you up, will, that will elevate you, people that will want you, basically you to succeed. Uh, and then press into it. It's scary, but anything worthwhile is scary. Um, yeah, as Helen Keller said. So, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Vince. I also want to thank WITV7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guest stars just like Vince and reaching folks just like you, ready to create your own extraordinary lives. <clears throat> Most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Vince Warnock. Find him, friend him, buy his book, listen to his podcast, book a free strategy call, join his free master classes, and sign up for his brand new Insider Club. It's all available at ChasingTheInsights, with a lisp, dot com. <laughs> That's all one word, ChasingTheInsights.com. From me to you, dear friends, I love you, and I want you to be really, truly, deeply happy, too. So go to HappyLiving.com and take our happy quiz, because when you measure your happy, you'll focus attention on it. And focusing attention on it inspires change and learning and improvement to flow right into your life. Once you take the quiz, and it really only takes a minute, then I hope you'll give some thought about what we can do together Yes, you and me, give some thought about what we can do together right now to improve the happy of your world, one person at a time. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome, and this is The Something Significant Show. We're out. That was awesome.